order at 5.02 and announce that it is being audio and video recorded. Members present are Councillor Ryan O'Donnell and myself, Warren Carney, and we're waiting for Councillor David Murphy, who will be here momentarily. See that there is no public comment. And um, do we have uh, minutes that we could um, approve? Yes, yes. The 13th of October. You move want to? to oh, yeah, I move we approve the minutes. Okay, and I'll second. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So those minutes are approved and I guess we can move right on to item number six which is um, zoning for significant trees. Do we have to reopen the public hearing or is it still going on? Public hearing is closed, so you're just discussing the. the well, we closed the public case. hearing, and now we're doing. Thank you. Um, well, could I move to recognize Carolyn Mish to talk Second. about some of the changes that were made last time, and any other ones that were made? <laughs> sure. Um, I think the uh, uh, Councillor Murphy had asked for consideration of different language regarding the timing um, that this, that the ordinance would take effect and to which properties it would become effective. There was a, um, the, the tree ordinance um, applies or is proposed to be applicable for anyone who's um, triggered some kind of review or relief from a board um, and would be sort of retroactively in effect as proposed. Um, up to 18 months prior to any submittal of, a, of an application for relief or review, so site plan zoning board. Um, and so he, as, at the time he suggested maybe 12 months was, um, 12 months of continuous ownership might be appropriate because he was concerned about how uh, people would know what ha might have taken place 18 months prior to their, to a transfer um, property ownership. So if someone buys a piece of property, they might not know that the previous owner had taken some trees down and then that new owner would be subject to tree replacement that they had no um, knowledge of and no um, um, interest in or had, had um, nothing to do with that. So um, instead of making a complicated distinction between how long you own the property versus how much before you um, submit a site plan or other zoning relief. Uh, I would suggest that maybe just 12 months instead of an 18 month time period, drop it down to 12 months. Um, and I actually had a conversation with Councilor Murphy about that before tonight to see if that made sense, if he felt comfortable with that timing. And he said that he thought it made sense not to be overly complicated and that 12 months made sense. The reason why I suggested that, there's no magic in that number, but um, it's certainly, um, it, once someone submits an application to sort of back out the number, it usually takes about three months for approval, just from advertising timelines, the time the board hears something, and then an appeal period and so forth. So there's already a three month period of time already once you sort of start down the road of applying. That means that you've had to do, done some planning before our project. So that is, in essence, is a nine month planning window for someone to be thinking about a project, which is still relatively short, particularly if it's a big project and you're talking about you know, lots of tree clearing. Maybe if it's a small project, it might not take so long in terms of planning. But um, anyway, that's sort of how I came up with the 12 months. Um, so that's what I would suggest as an alternative timeline for that section. That's really fine with me. I have 
one question. There was, <clears throat> last time you had some language in here um, saying um, this didn't apply to right-of-ways for electric utility. Right. Is that gone? I, no, it should still be in there. It got moved because you all felt that it made more sense to drop it down to the section below. Um, well, I don't see it. I guess that's not a problem. Oh. Um, from my notes, and I thought I saw it in an updated version, but maybe I just skipped right over it. Um, so it had been, um, it's 12.3 section A, legislative findings and intent. Mm -hmm. And then you all <laughs> talked about dropping it down to D. Right. The requirements of the section shall not apply to, and there would be um, number five and after the fourth bullet, is it not there? Yeah, I don't, I only you have just four. just one through four. Yeah. Oh. What if I were wrong? I think it was that on that one you sent me, Pam, that it was still in there. You know, right after the meeting, I thought I saw a version that had it in there. You here for public comments? Yeah. Uh, but at any rate, it wasn't intended to be dropped off. It was intended to be moved. Right. To, um, um, D, subsection D. Okay. Uh, well, I just I want to make sure that we're voting on the, the final, or considering the final version. Okay. So I mean I don't know if there are any other discrepancies or if it's if number five, number D five is the only one. Then maybe we just read it aloud or something. But where are you up to? Is so now we're on. Um, Tree ordinance. Tree. Tree ordinance. And we were discussing the change that Ms. Mish suggested. Uh, let's drop the window to 12 months from 18. And then I noted that something we changed last meeting about an exemption for utility company land uh, seems to be missing from this version. So we're trying to figure that out under Section D. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? I don't know. I guess now I don't see that in that section. So I apologize. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> it wasn't intended to be taken off. I mean, that's still on the table as a recommendation coming forward for the planning board. So um, the, the language. Um, if you don't have the old version, it um, was to drop down that um, it's not meant to regulate work performed by a utility company in maintenance of its rights of ways or in maintenance, repair, or replacement of infrastructure that's unrelated to a development project requiring zoning relief. And was that something under D? Was there more than was there, or was it part of one of the other ones? Yeah, this is 9 5 uh, that just I didn't think put away. What had happened was the version that I found without the typos didn't have that in there. Oh, is that what happened? It's funny because I went through and checked all the other editions and they were on there. And so I guess I must have just missed it. So, yeah, well. Let's see if I can find it. Were there other changes besides typos and this um, moving of the section? Um, the um, there were some there was a capitalization of warden I believe I have in my notes that um, I thought was incorporated um, and I think it came out of this committee that um, 
under E, providing for replacement trees according to the following standards. Replacement trees shall be non-invasive as defined by the planning board instead of mm -hmm. um, listing the website address. Oh. Um, and um, then you wanted um, um, on the second page under two pay funds to the city tree replacement fund account that in the city's at, in the planning board's estimate instead of the city's estimate. Mm -hmm. Do you know we're meeting tomorrow night? Can we have the right version for tomorrow? It's a good idea. I, I am seeing that yeah. section U. We should do it tomorrow. Yeah, we should do it tomorrow. Three. If you get, because we're meeting tomorrow night at five o'clock. Okay. Yeah. And if I can you can get the right the version, we'll do it because we're all we're doing tomorrow is our rules. Mm -hmm. We could do it before we do rules. Okay. And just have the right version here, and we'll just get it, and then well, it can still be on. It's not on the agenda. Oh, well, you, we could continue, continue it to our next meeting. <laughs> well, but, <laughs> but this is your public meeting. You can, can you can. Um, can't you add something that you didn't anticipate, otherwise anticipate in a public session to your next meeting? Well, I would be, if I could make a suggestion, I mean, this, this ordinance has been delayed for so long. If we're delayed to our next regular meeting, that would be fine as far as I'm concerned. As as the only problem is you've closed the public hearing, so I don't want too much more time to, <laughs> so you have a nice Yeah, and if, we, if, if it's possible just to continue it to our meeting tomorrow, see the correct version. We don't. We don't. It's not like we have some public here tonight that was would be duped into missing the, right. you know, the right, the, the potential to comment on it since there's nobody here to comment on it. Okay. And then we could, when we approve, we could approve the correct version of it. It's funny that the, that some of the changes are there and there's some that aren't there. Yeah. So I don't know what yeah. happened. Um. So. Yeah, I mean, I can get that to Pam. I won't be able to come to the meeting, but I can. Mm -hmm. But presumably, all the other issues. Yeah, if you check with Pam and, and you guys make sure it's got everything and it's yeah. supposed to have in it, yeah. and then we'll just. Uh, and actually, we could not adjourn. We could just continue it till tomorrow, and then it'll be the same. <laughs> the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long break. <laughs> we'll continue this till tomorrow at five. And we'll just take it up there. <laughs> um, but that seems the most practical way to get the right version. You guys can get your heads together during the day tomorrow and make sure we have the right version of it. Yeah, thank you. Sure you don't want to come see us tomorrow? We'll miss you. Thank you. <laughs> On a motion to continue to our next meeting. Yeah. Sure. So move. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. You have another one, Carolyn, or are we on to yeah, the zoning? So the zoning ones we did. I have two more, but I'll wait to get it. Do you want to slide them up while she's here so we don't take the one? I think they're all up there. The items B and C, I think. Yeah. Okay. Meeting. meeting A. Okay, so we continue that one. So the next one is uh, ordinance pertaining to glass to ensure structures exempt from review minimally maintain an existing amount of glass on their street facing facade. You're on. Um, so this is um, this ordinance is not part of zoning and the central business design standards are separate um, review uh, under separate chapter and um, for many years there have been um, a series of exemptions from central business architecture review of buildings and um, modifications to buildings and um, um, the um, this is has been one of the number four item 14 under the exemptions that any alterations or renovations to a not what are classified as anomaly buildings or transitional residential buildings um, don't have to go to the central business architecture for review. This just adds, um, tightens up the language a little bit by adding um, clarification that 
renovations and alterations um, are exempt, but they should still follow the criteria for street facing facades, ground floor street facing facades, which is to maintain um, at least 50% of the ground floor as, as glass, if that's what exists there um, in the current state. And so that modified renovations or alterations wouldn't take that away from the 50% um, sort of baseline equation. Um, and the reason for that is that for all along we've had exemptions for any modifications along those um, street facing facades. And if you're doing any changes, if you have at least 50% of the glazed area facing the street, then there's no review at all, even if it's not an anomaly building, but if it's some um, theme commercial building um, along Main Street, you can make all sorts of changes to it as long as you keep at least the that amount of glass. So it's sort of bringing the standard up um, for buildings that are not being commercial but are in these different class, in this different class. I just want to do, um, could you give an example of an anomaly building? That would, or yes. Even a hypothetical example. <laughs> well, I have a real life example. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so an anomaly building, it was the old police station. <laughs> um, and um, there are some anomaly buildings um, on King Street, like where the, um, I think Barassi Insurance and Subway, that strip of one story sort of mm -hmm. box buildings um, are considered anomaly buildings. Um, because? Thing, uh, Transitional residential would be uh -huh. the houses that are commercial, that use as commercial buildings. Uh -huh. uh, so some of the insurance companies also have, like Whalen Insurance has a big house right on, right next to. And in fact, the Northampton Cooperative Bank is an anomaly building too. It's a one story, just brick box. Um, so the idea is if someone wants to go in and change the facade, they shouldn't be able to just bring in the whole front window because as it reads now, an anomaly building, you can make alterations to it, um, but you can't expand it. And so an alteration would be considered closing up all those front windows. So right now it's exempt, but with adding this language, it wouldn't be exempt because um, it would state that you're exempt from review so long as you keep that amount of window, storefront window along the street. Yeah, and as we grow central business, we pick up more anomaly buildings since it was mm -hmm. written for central business, you know, in the 90s sometimes, as I recall. Right. And so as we start adding other buildings, we get more anomaly buildings and more residential buildings. Right. So, so we're changing this thing. Just be adding a sentence. So that as long as so they're still mean, exempt. Do we mean 2005 though? Yes, because we haven't done any classification since, since then. 2005. Yeah. Now, when we but we've grown the district, but we've classified everything in the yeah. new area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's after my time. So. <laughs> uh, but this change is effective when? Right away. Right away. As soon as it gets adopted. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you could change the classification as of today. Well, no, we haven't classified since 05. So. We, we've classified as they've been added, so technically you could say there's been an addition to the classification list because we've added, you know. Chunks of new yeah. property, yeah, yeah, the church and some right. other stuff on King Street. Um, so you're exempt. Now, how. How does this actually get enforced? When someone comes in for a building permit, we look at all that. Uh, we look, so someone who has a business or a building in the central business district proposes a change. We look at it, we determine what classification it is and whether or not it needs review based on the proposed change. So it's building permit. All right, so it would be, but it would be a planning staff review. Who staffs central business now? You do. Oh. <laughs> So I so the same thing that I do with zoning permit reviews with the building commissioner. 
you we do. Look at, we look and at then you, you would make the determination if they're cheating on the glass or not. And if they're not, it they get a permit. Right. If they are, then it kicks up to Central Then it goes to the full Dog and Pony Show at Central right. Business. Okay. And we ask, but but we ask the applicant to provide the data. Yeah. So we and say, how much of your storefront are you changing? So it's not us making. So the applicant could say, you know, oops, I'll make the windows a foot bigger to right. and not go. Exactly. So they could comply and then they yeah. be all set. Yeah. Okay. So exempt except for you can't change, reduce the glass. Right. But you can't. But you don't have to make it bigger. You right. just have to maintain. Right. Can't make it worse. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Please. Um, since it's it is 2015, is there any reason to have the effective date of March 1st? No. Yeah. Yeah. You can. It makes sense to do that. You can just mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know move it forward with that. And then that right. probably yeah that probably makes more sense because you're not class. I mean. Plus, and we, we've added the central business right. since then, so you've obviously classified since. And we don't go back and change the order. The other, so, no, no, so we probably should update that. Yeah. That's what was confusing me a little bit. Okay. So yeah. Are you suggesting changing the January first date as well, or striking that as well? Is there two dates? Is the effective date, which we should just strike, and then there's yeah. the classification date. Of and, and the classification, okay. yeah. We, the, well. We could, you're right, we could do without yeah. the first one, and the second one could be most effective whenever you want it effective. Cause well, but I think that what um, Councilor Donald suggested is most recent makes sense because yeah. the committee is the one that continues cool. to reclassify, so, mm -hmm. and we have that on record. So, most recent instead of the, instead right. of the March date. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, effect, oh. just to strike the effective and then based on its most recent classification. That's true, because as we add more territory, we're picking up more anomaly buildings and more transitional residential buildings. Right. So I don't remember, it's been, a, it's been a while since I was there, but didn't we want the transitional residential buildings relaxed from the original ordinance? I think they were. Well, it might have been 2005 that they were relaxed. That could have been. Because it says effective 2005. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's when that happened. Because yeah. I think I was still there then. Not for long. So do you want a formal motion on that? Amendment? Sure, with the amendments and... Yeah, you can move it as amended and then read us the way it is and then... So we, we won't do an amendment motion, we'll just... Change it. Okay, so as amended, I, I would move a, a positive recommendation. Do you want to read it the way it's amended, just so we... Yeah, um, so item 14 would read, you know, I can start at item C if you want. C, the following elements are specifically exempt from review. From review by the committee, the building commissioner shall issue permits for this work only after determining that the project is exempt. Uh, 14, alteration or renovation but not expansion or demolition of any anomaly or transitional residential building based on its most recent classification if developed in accordance with the design guidelines and so long as the change does not reduce the glazed area of any street facing facade that works for you yeah. good um, second second any more discussion all in favor um, please say aye. 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 aye good And complete street stuff. Is that you? Good. Okay. Okay. Um, so what's in front of you is um, uh, essentially a shift from um, our current complete streets policy, which was adopted as part of the. Um, uh, transportation and parking plan for the city um, and um, this is a this is a process to codify what's been policy to make it you know the required means by which we address improvements to the public infrastructure 
Um, part of the impetus, a, a major impetus of doing this is to, um, is I guess twofold. One is to be eligible to, for state funds for complete streets improvements. Um, the state is, um, has actually just announced its first um, pot of money statewide for um, public street improvements. Um, two communities that have adopted um, a complete streets um, ordinance. Um, and the other piece of it is to really, instead of having it a policy that some people um, in various departments might remember at a certain moment in time to follow, this um, is going to be on the books and would be required for different for all departments to sort of um, to use as their um, um, guideline for uh, proposed improvements to the street network. Um, so those are sort of the two main reasons for this. Essentially, it's, it's um, the same language that we've had as a policy, and it's just creating it as an ordinance. No, did, did, um, did DPW or whatever they now call themselves weigh in on this one? Or? I believe they did. Yeah. They did. Yeah, and it went to um, parking and transportation as well. Yep. Oh, do you have a good sponsor? Well, quick thing, if I if I can. Sure. There's two different versions of this ordinance stapled together. Um, I believe the second one might be the one you're formally submitting, and it's the most recent one. The one at the top was the one the transportation and parking commission looked at. I don't know if there have have been any changes, but. One thing I, I'd like to correct from the second was the Transportation Park Commission did not sponsor this. We we made a positive recommendation, but we didn't add our sponsorship to that. So okay. that should be stress strip, right. you know. So which one are we working from? The, the second, second one? I'm assuming one? the second one since that has the mayor's sponsorship on it, which was a more recent addition. Yeah. Okay. Do you you sure that second one's a good one or? came from Wayne, so. <laughs> and I just printed out the one from the webpage this morning, so. That's um, Wayne's. Yeah. And you want to check, um, because you've seen it before, I really haven't, so is it? Yeah, and um, my only other comment was that I mean, the Transportation Parking Commission endorsed the, the concepts behind yeah. the ordinance. But did not. Um, but my, op my observation at the time, and I flagged this, and we, we actually asked Alan, uh, the yeah. solicitor, um, Alan, the solicitor, <laughs> solicitor Seawall, and um, I spoke to him today on an unrelated issue, and he brought this up. Um, and this is a strange ordinance. I mean, it's not really, it doesn't look like other ordinances, you know. It's no, it's not, no person shall do this. It's you a policy do. ordinance, yeah. Kind and of it's like strange, it. yeah. But apparently that's what the state is requiring us to do for a certain level of recognition. So even though it's not really perfect, it's a little bit strange. Yeah, so notwithstanding that fact. But, but he gave it his blessing anyway. Yeah. yeah. I have it right here. <laughs> God bless him. I could, I could do that. <laughs> He was excited to be going out for a glass of wine tonight rather than visiting with us. So. <laughs> Any other highlights you have for this, sir? We need the money. <laughs> what are the two communities? What are the two communities? It's a Hoyoke did it, I saw. Is there another city that Past the complete streets. I think in the eastern, I think. Um, Cambridge or something. Somerville. Yeah. I assume. Yeah. I think we were early on in the policy phase and then when, you know, it's transitioned. But there are a lot of other cities now, knowing that there's this money out there, they're working towards that. So the sooner we get it in, the sooner we can get in. For <laughs> why, why does the transport, in, the, in seven, the Transportation and Parking Commission shall approve any decision to use a signal instead of a roundabout except in downtown and Florence Center. 
Well, yeah. That's interesting. And to be honest, that wasn't really discussed in the commission. That was another one where I thought, this is what makes this a strange ordinance. I'm not so sure why. It's almost a separation of powers issue in a way. I mean, I'm not, I don't know why the city council can give a, an executive commission the authority to do something. To it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not, I mean, I would say it's similar to the planning board's purview and certain, in the way certain ordinances work in that, right. you know, we're directed as staff to do certain things and the ordinance that spells what, you know, how we go about approving certain things. And if you're going to deviate from that, then it needs a board review, essentially. So this is saying, you know, this is the standard. If you're not going to do it, then it has to be reviewed you know, by a committee, as opposed to just making a SAC level decision that, you know, some one or two people are deciding roundabouts are not appropriate, and then it just but moves in that direction. Right. That's interesting. But staff could decide that roundabouts are appropriate, and the Transportation and Park Commission would not be. Right, so because it's already established as a policy that that's <coughs> the way we want to treat intersections. Is number four with regards to um, shrinking intersections and accommodating trucks when supported by traffic counts. Is that part of the state requirement? Um, I don't think it's that specific, but I have to say I don't know for sure. What I know about this is that the idea is that to make a complete street, you really need to consider all the users in the network. And so pedestrians are affected most significantly when intersection, when curb radiuses are bigger. Mm -hmm. And so this, um, you know, narrowing creates a safer um, pedestrian crossing. And so that's, the standard, that's the standard direction that we want to move in. Um, but there may be certain circumstances where the location, because of the types of traffic that are, that's moving through the intersection, warrant something bigger. But I don't know, I don't know that the state um, is requiring such detail as we have. I have a question about Please. item nine. Um, this says prioritize retrofitting streets to add sidewalks for all streets within one mile of all public schools in downtown Northampton and Florence Center when the streets are reconstructed essentially and when funding is available. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you considered other things besides public schools, like just the word, the, the, the phrase community center, um, if that would be a worthy addition or if that would be too burdensome. Um, and I'm trying to think of an example where that might apply, but right. in theory, you know, places where people tend to congregate or something. Right, so many of those are already within the one mile of downtown Northampton or Florence, so okay. um, it sort of covers that. Okay. When this, when this comes back to council, could you get for us whatever the state minimum standards were so we can sort of tell what, where we embellished it and, you know, what the, where, where the bar was set so we can tell how far we cleared it by? Uh -huh. <coughs> item, item 3B, um, lane width should be 10 feet to 11 feet wide. Is that, that seems like that would set a, um, a minimum as well as a maximum. So in other words, could we build a, a lane that was nine and a half feet? In some cases you, you might want to. That's work. pretty narrow. That's getting down into the um, okay. zone of concern <laughs> by engineers. Okay. But lane width, we assume that these streets usually have two lanes, so. Right. So in the minimum street we're going to see is 20 feet wide, being that it has two lanes. 
Right, or for a two for a two way street because for a one way it would probably be a little bit wider. Yeah, if there's only one lane. So would you want on. that clarification then for a two way street? It's per lane, isn't it? I mean, if that's the way I read it, but it wouldn't hurt to clarify it. Okay. Just so you know, which is good. Yeah. And again, it's probably going to be DPW that's going to be catching this stuff, right? Since they have to approve all this, it's all going to buy them. <coughs> Right, they've looked at this. No, but I mean, yeah. in, in, in fact, if we're redoing streets, they're the ones that are going to be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're right. going to be the point right. people for this anyway. Exactly. So their yep. engineers are going to do mm -hmm. it. Anything else you? Nothing. No, do you see anything else you want? You know it better than we do because you saw that transportation and parking. So we're, we're going to strike transportation and parking as a sponsor. Right. Because it wasn't a sponsor. What else are we doing on the first page that you were seeing um, there? Just a um, couple small Scribner things. Item five should end um, except alleys and shared streets. It's a little conjunction, conjunction, junction. And item seven, I assume city should be <coughs> lowercase as it is elsewhere or somehow make it uniform one way or the other. And that's it. Um, I think that's meant, just so you know, I think that's meant to be when the city as an entity reconstructs streets. Okay. Well, then item A, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Then item A right at the beginning, should that city be capitalized? And then that's the last I'll oh, mention okay. capitalization. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then in B3, we're going to clarify two lane streets, one lane streets. Right. So, so you're going to put lane width should be 10 feet to 11 feet wide for one way? No, for a two-way street. Yeah. And if you have a one-way street, it could, it could be? You probably want a 15 for fire department access. Okay. Because mm -hmm. right, if you have two-way, you've got more. Now, do subdivision regulations reflect that now? Because they, they used to have wider streets. Yeah, we have um, for um, new residential street. Yes, um, we um, have required a narrowing at intersections, and but we have wider streets um, where there's on street parking. And then. Um, I'll double check the commercial streets, but we could certainly, we should make sure that they're consistent, but I'm fairly certain they are. So somebody's doing a new residential subdivision. I mean, those used to have, back in the days when we were cookie cuttering frontage lots out, those streets were really pretty wide back then. Right. But that's not the case anymore. Right, they're 24, maximum 24 feet wide up into the intersection, but that also accommodates on street parking. And this is really for the travel way itself being. Mm -hmm. right. I'm sorry to be, <clears throat> be thinking about this, but then are we also going to say for one way, for one lane roads, minimum of 15 feet? Or do we just not say anything on that? Um, I'm not sure. I think it would depend on the situation. I mean, we might have smaller alleys that would be so it's you know, 10 or 11 feet or. You know, it kind of, it really depends on the situation. And we have so few of them um, that I'm not sure that it... It's not necessary. Didn't we specifically in language in here something, somewhere talk about that this didn't apply to them? I think I remember reading that somewhere. I was ever, I think so. In, in five, A five, we talk about just for sidewalks on a newly constructed street, except alleys and shared streets. Mm -hmm. 
but it is not, it's not specific outside of that. And also item seven says that street suite reconstruct have to conform with dimensions and subdivision regulations anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. So, okay. All right, ready for a motion on this one? As, uh, I mean, I would, would a neutral recommendation be to stay frowned on that? <laughs> Well, ultimately, it's to me what city council does. Right. So it's going to so city council. So if you want to move, we, we forward it as amended with a neutral recommendation. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I would, I would make that motion. I'll second. Right. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And again, it's the second one we're doing. Exactly. Right? Yeah. The second one, too. So we have the mayor, but not us. Right. Got parking spaces, and you're not. Are you parking spaces, or are you done? Oh. Winter parking regulations. Yep, yeah, that looks like it's next. Ordinance pertaining, no, not pertaining, regarding winter parking regulations. Or recommendations, fifteen point five two three. This May is from. Introduce it. Yeah, this is from your other committee. Thank you, Carol. Thanks. Bye. This came from the mayor's office originally, and it sat around in the transportation and parking <laughs> commission for months. And then when we started to get worried it was going to snow soon, we thought we to do something. You might have worked back on it. And so we did, and it was actually our only truly divided vote. It passed very narrowly. I voted against it, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, and well, what it does is, as you can see, it, it simply says that you can't park in a municipal lot uh, during a snow emergency from midnight to 6 a.m. with certain exceptions. Um, and I should have actually brought the exceptions for you because I'm not sure I can remember all of them off the top of my head, but you know, there are certain lots where you can, but this originated, um, a good example is where this originated from, which is the, the park and ride at Sheldon Field. Apparently there was problems plowing that last winter during our big, big winter. People were warehousing their cars too. Yeah, that was the concern. Um, you know, my other concern is it seems very unclear to me how much of a problem it is, quite frankly. And originally the DPW wasn't even aware it was a, a real problem, but um, you know, now I think they they agree that it is to some extent, but I don't think we know, you know, how many people leave their cars there legitimately when they don't have any other place to park. Mm -hmm. Or who's parking there for multiple days? It snows. They come and, back and their cars gone. And downtown, don't we? We have a lot that we let people park in to clear the other ones. Correct? Isn't there one one downtown that it's okay to park in during a snow emergency because they can't be on the streets anymore? They've got to get those extra cars have to go somewhere. I think there are, are several. Um, I even I think I recall seeing a sign at the senior center where someone has told me you, know, you can park your car at the senior center. For so yeah, there are there are exceptions, but this was this was done just so there's authority to take cars out when they're blocking the <coughs> snow removal. Yeah. So anyway, it might be something. It seems like it's in good legal form. We it just seems weird that it's here without. You know, it talks about except for the following, and then there's no following. You know. Right. And I could certainly make a point to bring the I whole mean, ordinance to the that council. That should be at council, you know, because yeah. here, I mean, this might be one we sent through without a recommendation too, right. and just say it's at council because it was incomplete when it was here. And if it came from the mayor, the mayor can explain right. what's going on with it and what the exemptions are, make sure it makes sense, particularly to you, to the downtown councilors, because right. they're the ones that you've got a chunk of it, and, and uh, Jim Lee says a chunk of downtown. Make sure you have a whole piece too, don't you? you? Come on, I think so. You come up pretty close, yeah, yeah, so that you guys are comfortable that your constituents won't be screaming that they're they got nowhere to go because they can understand them being off street and out of some of the lots, but they got to go somewhere, you know, until, until things are cleaned and then they can move around a little bit more. 
believe the vote was three in favor, two against, and two abstentions in the transportation department. It was a very strange vote. Very strange. Anyway, and I can I can bring those um, exceptions okay. to the council. So I, I would if it's I I'll move now a, a neutral recommendation. Yep. Second. Second. Okay. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. And then then it just is really of I want to make sure all the the downtown councilors have a chance to weigh in on it because I don't get anywhere near that. So you guys know what what people people will do. Uh, ordinance revising section 312-117 schedule handicapped parking spaces on Kai Street, which I assume is somewhere near the bay. Yep, exactly. Um, right, this would change the location of one handicapped parking space. Um, then moves it up closer to Main Street? To, uh, switches the, 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 the side. Right now, it's, it, and this actually would just make it reflect reality, it currently is the first space northerly from Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> and it's recorded as the second space southerly from Depot Avenue. So the other side of Kai Street. Yeah. It just makes it conform to reality. That's what Puts it where it really is. is. Exactly. So I move a positive that, that seems reasonable. Yeah. Put <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it where it is. Any other discussion? We good? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Uh, and Florence Ordinance revising section 312-46 designation of parking space. And our next motion, this one. This came from what DPW? Correct, yes. Okay. From DPW, a positive recommendation of transportation parking is a section of the code that describes essentially what um, handicapped parking spaces should look like and um, currently says that there needs to be a uh, four feet of crosshatch. But of course, it doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense if you're, if you're parking one next to each other, but it doesn't make any sense parallel. to parallel. Yeah. You don't need to cross edge in the road. So that exception is put in there, and also it says that they'll be designated with the international symbol of accessibility, uh, parking space marking. So mm -hmm. just a common sense addition clarification. Okay. So I move a positive recommendation for this as well. Second. 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 Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. And then we have appointments on here. But these are, it's been too sh short a period of time, has it not, for us to deal with those? Because they only came on Thursday. We've got, what, seven days we have to wait? Mm -hmm. Strange. Yeah. It's like going swimming. <laughs> After having a cheeseburger, you got to wait. Um, so a lot, of these are, a lot of these are reappointments. Does anyone see anyone on here that they want to, since we're here, that, that they feel we need to contact before we deal with, you know, we'll deal with it at our, we don't even make it tomorrow, do we? Because it's going to make it Thursday. Anybody here that we want to split up and call, or are we relatively happy with these people? I, I can take away one off your list. Yeah. Esther White. What happened to Esther? We approved the uh, change in the, her term in council. All right. Oh, okay. So it was not a, it was a, the Scrivener's error one? It no. wasn't a Scrivener's error. Uh, I don't know what, where. How it got wrong. Yes. I don't want to, okay. I don't want to, I don't know. So. <clears throat> circle. I can see here. I would like to. What? What happened to James Lonthal? He went to Europe. Forever? For an extended period of time. I think Europe. Mm -hmm. So it's some kind of sabbatical. Oh, okay. And um, Richard Cooper's appointment to the Transportation Park Commission has expired, so we're putting him back on. Mm -hmm. and this is a new person, Ms. Alro Fisher, so I would like to call her. Okay. It, That's it. With this, but they have her here as Parks and Recreation. Is that correct? No. 
It's just a transportation oh. and parking commission. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's not. It's just not the uh, bowl. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. No, that would make sense because you're chairing that committee. Yeah. So but that's it. Yeah. Talk to her in your capacity as chairperson and okay. and this committee. And Richard Cooper's been there, huh? And he's been. I'm assuming he he's a good guy. He's been participating. Exactly. He's kind of a Florence person. So that's really the only one that we need to that we need to uh, talk about. So we have any new business? Are we good? Yeah. Pam, are we good in your book? I mean, with regards to our agenda, do we cover everything? We need? Not an apostolic blessing, but just for this meeting. Okay. Then a motion to adjourn. Yes. Adjourn. Second. Okay. All better. Bye. 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 Bye.